And here we go. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer of Dataversity. We would like to thank you for joining the latest installment of the monthly Dataversity webinar series, Advanced Analytics with William Pink Knight, sponsored today by Zen Optics. Today, William will be discussing, is our information management mature? Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we will be collecting them via the Q&A section, or if you'd like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag ADV analytics. And if you'd like to chat with us or with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. To open the Q&A panel or the chat panel, you'll find those icons in the bottom middle of your screen for those features. And just to note, the chat defaults to send to just the panelists, but you may absolutely change that to network with everyone. As always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of the session, and any additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now, let me turn it over to Hina from Zen Optics for a brief word from our sponsor. Hina, hello and welcome. Thank you, Shannon. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, am I clear coming across? You fine? are. Yeah, All right. good. Okay, perfect. Let me share my screen um, and bring up our presentation. Give me a second. And I will just ask that you confirm. Oh, um, it says host disabled participating, participant screen sharing, Shannon. Oh. You're okay. all set now. Yep. Good. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Can everyone see my screen? Looks good. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. So, um, you know, really excited to be here um, and kick this off today. The, you know, the is our information management mature? I think that question is is very pertinent to where we are, sort of in the overall ecosystem and sort of the time in terms of the uh, genesis of data and analytics, right? And so when you talk about information maturity and, and where we are today, um, it's a journey um, that we've all been on over the last few decades that has seen an explosion in basically the building of you know, large data pipelines, um, analytics assets and tools out there, self-service BI, and all of that sort of ties into, you know, not just your data strategy, but also your information strategy, right? And that's where, you know, today organizations are spending a large amount of effort to figure out, you know, is the information management really mature, right? Now, when you think about, you know, the explosion of self-service BI and analytics that happened as a result of the explosion in the data world, um, we've created a ton of content out there, right? We've created dashboards and reports and made these KPIs available. Tons of assets that are spread across the organization. But truly to understand sort of where we gain value out of that and really is, is there maturity in how that information is really being consumed? Is it really being used to make the decisions the way we intended to use the data and the information to make those decisions? We tend to find that across the organizations and large enterprises, a, a typical challenge is lack of visibility. And there is lack of visibility on sort of both ends where it's for the business users as well as for the, the teams that are actually supporting those business users, you know, the analytics teams. And, and these challenges are interrelated, but they're sort of unique to each of these personas, uh, but sort of feed off of each other, right? The business users, user is really struggling with you know, lack of awareness because there is just, you know, so much out there as a result of the sprawl that has been created that there's limited knowledge on what is available, right? Really to use in terms of, you know, access to that information, uh, unsure of where to get it. Um, is it really the right set of information? Is it the right content? Um, and then obviously leading to sort of experience issues, right? With um, aligning those assets with business context. Now, when you talk about sort of what the challenges are on the IT or the BI and analytics team side, the sprawl is, is evident, right? We all deal with that. Um, and it's just a factor of this growth and explosion in the, in the you know, just the maturity of data and analytics and self-service BI. But really the processes around managing that, you know, are there guardrails to really manage that? You know, so that there's, obviously constant um, you know, requests to create new content, leading to obviously duplication of content, redundant content being created, and as a result of which people are wasting time to go find that. And you're also adding to that technology debt, right? That 
we've all inherited as a result of um, you know the legacy BI stacks sort of evolving into the modern analytics and BI stacks as a result of the overall growth in analytics data um, and information management. So, so when we talk and we look at this and really help organizations achieve that information maturity and sort of identify even where they are in the various sort of information maturity stages that William's going to talk about within that framework, which is really simple and really will help sort of tie it back to understanding, you know, where are you today? What's as is and where do you need to get to be or where do you need to be? Our goal really is to, give me a second, I'm trying to get to the next slide. unlock that power right of basically uh, bi and analytics and really empowering those users so how do we do this how does Zenoptics do this uh, Zenoptics is a bi and analytics hub our goal is really to simplify the discovery of the, those assets right help you immediately attack you know your as is information maturity stage and really help you understand what do you need to do to go to that next level right it's not just about discovery once you've discovered the content our goal is really to empower the teams uh, that work with that content to use the information and collaborate along that information right and then actually help not just the content you know uh, the end users or the business users but also the people that are responsible for that environment to really align efforts with objectives gain the value out of those investments, scale the investments, right? And ultimately design a really easy, simple, consumable experience to drive usage and adoption. That's really the goal of sort of what we see as adding, you know, the value of Xenoptics in terms of what enterprises are trying to do to align with their um, information strategy that directly leads into delivering information maturity. So we have, you know, a really, you know, I'm going to obviously pass on to Shannon and William, but just to kind of leave you with something, we have a, a very interesting webinar coming up on the 22nd of June, where Donald Farmer and Peter are actually going to talk about, you know, why your analytics strategy and not your BI tools need an update, right? You can also uh, use the URL here to a case study uh, with one of our customers, Janie and learn more about sort of their journey on, you know, driving adoption and actually achieving, you know, larger or greater information maturity. And if you have any other questions or you'd like to sort of connect, you know, more than happy to do so. My personal information is included here. So um, I'm always available to set up a quick call and connect. I'll hand back to Shannon. I'm gonna stop sharing. Nina, thank you so much for kicking us off. If you have any questions for Zena, uh, Hina uh, or about Xenoptics, um, feel free to submit them in the Q&A portion of your screen. She'll be joining us at the end of the webinar with uh, for our Q&A. And with that, let me introduce the speaker for the series, William McKnight. William has advised many of the world's best known organizations. He strategizes for, um, he's, his strategies, I can speak uh, today, <laughs> form the information management plan for leading companies in numerous industries. He is a prolific author and a popular keynote speaker and trainer. He has performed dozens of benchmarks on leading database, data lake, streaming, and data integration products. And with that, I will give the floor to William to get his presentation started. Hello and welcome. Hello, and thank you, Shannon. Thank you, especially Hina as well. Um, it has been great getting to know Zen Optics in the course of building this presentation. And if you have a BI problem out there, I do encourage you to take a look at what they have because I think it's unique on the market. I think it really speaks to a lot of situations. Uh, anyway, today we're here to talk about one of my favorite subjects. Is our information management mature? Now, it didn't used to be one of my favorite subjects because I used to think, well, it's kind of a bad question. Let's just talk about what your next steps could be. But uh, an information maturity model actually uh, advises what those next steps could be. And um, I think trying to keep up in terms of maturity is actually a good thing. And I think it's highly correlated to the bottom line of the organization. It's not just I think, uh, there's been studies that show that. And so let's uh, start with a philosophy. Beyond the mountain is another mountain. And uh, you may have heard me say this, I like to say it a lot, it's a Haitian proverb, 
And uh, what I say here is let's take one mountain at a time. And do know that there are more mountains after you get over the one that you're on today, and that's okay. And guess what? More mountains are being, unlike the picture, <laughs> more mountains are actually being built uh, beyond the mountains that we can even see. So the future is looming. The future is different. And I was observing to Shannon in the pre-call that I don't really recall any period where there's been so much innovation, so much happening in the broader space of data and analytics. It's really like that today. And I've been in the space a long time. So, hey, uh, it's all good uh, as long as we're keeping up. And so let's get into seeing if we can measure where we are today and get some next steps going. We are in the business of data. No matter what company you're in, you're in the business of data today. The volume's exploding. It's becoming more real time. Big data is actually essential today to get under management. It's not an option. Information usage differentiates the competition. How we use our data is really what the basis is for differentiation uh, in the competitive marketplace. Quality is important. Information is reused. Even seldom used data, like big data sometimes, is essential to be under management and to be accessible, well-performing, and have good high non-functionals and things like that. Third-party information is essential to use. And that just explodes the information possibilities for us. We've all heard about the data marketplaces. And there's a lot going on there. There's a lot of data there. I'm sure there's data there that you could use that you're not using because there's so much data there. And some people are just beginning their journey on that. And we'll see where that is on the maturity cycle, as well as probably about 24, 25 other things as we go along here. This is sort of a presentation that's going to try to stay at, I don't know, 5,000 feet. Because if I dare dive down into any one, I will not get through all the topics. So that's just how it's going to be today. Information is a key business asset. Yeah, I hope you believe that, by the way. I hope you feel empowered by that. The fact that you work on a key business asset for your business. I hope you feel uh, like you need to share that news, share the good news, if you will, with the rest of the organization in an appropriate way and kind of push the organization up, push up the maturity, because that is really where it's at today. Here's some other quotes about data. I won't belabor them all, but you see some of these uh, prominent people saying like big data is at the foundation of all the mega trends that are happening. Yes, and every company has big data in its future and every company will eventually be in the data business. So says Thomas Davenport, I couldn't agree more. So for the first time really, we have this economy that's based on a key resource information that is not only renewable, but self-generating. Running out of it, it's not a problem. Not a problem. And nobody's 100%. Nobody's you're going to find that very few people are going to be at my maturity level five. And that's okay. But you have to be somewhere on this journey. You have to be pushing your way up. You have to be going up, not down on this journey. So let me talk about the data that's coming into uh, focus here in this presentation. Data on data maturity. Okay. So what we do here at McKnight Consulting Group, we look at our last 30 what I call intimate enterprise projects. These are mostly clients. Of course, if you're a client, we get to know you pretty well. We can grade you out across our 50 questions pretty well. Sometimes we don't even have to ask. We already know because we've been told that's how we do our projects. And otherwise, um, we come across you know, many other uh, uh, enterprises that aren't clients. We're just talking to them, their prospects. We find that we've already have, we already have 25 questions answered in the course of getting to know you. And so why don't we ask the 25 more and, and get through our questions. So in our questions, we ask for probe, we do probing answers, not just we accept your answer uh, because everybody's a little bit different. If you don't know yet in this business, data, I mean, the, the terminology is all over the place. It still is, and it's hard to keep up. And certainly that's something that you wanna be sure that you're on common basis with whoever you're talking to, before you dive in too far, because you could be talking past one another. I see it all the time. So we look for probing answers. 40 of them are on data topics. 10 of them are on business success. And for publicly traded companies, we use public information as well. Now, we're not always looking at the full company when we do this. Uh, if, if you're a Fortune 50 company, 
uh, we, we, you know, we don't take in the whole company. We take in your division, your department, what have you. And we look at how well that is doing because that's what we can get our arms around here. Uh, progression in data topics does approximately equal data maturity is what we found. So that's, what, that's a basis of what we're assuming here. So if, as you get further along in your data lake, get further along in your master data management, your data governance, et cetera, the things we're gonna throw on the table here, that is what we are considering maturity. You're doing more, not less, with important things. Now, uh, the, the questions and answers are always under NDA or friend DA, so I'm not gonna be identifying individual companies. We've probably done this for close to 50 companies at this point, and we try to keep it on a rolling 30 basis here. So it's a, it's a, bit, it's a bit of a journey. And when we started out, we had everybody into nice 20% buckets, right? There was a 20% at the low end, 20% uh, at the high end, and three of them in the middle, right? Uh, what we have done over time is we interview new companies and we add them in. We find out, well, their profile is really more aligned with this one, this bucket, or that bucket. So we, don't, uh, we didn't rejigger, if you will, what the different uh, buckets meant. Now, we could not hold everything else conf constant but figured that this all shakes out over the course of the 50 data points. And the questions get updated too. So it's a moving uh, target. And if I spend any more time on the approach, I wouldn't get to the meat of it. So I won't. Uh, and I will say though, that here we have the, the uh, 30 companies and how they were graded out on data maturity and business success. And there's all sorts of mathematical things we can do about it, but I thought I'd present the raw data and you can think about it as well. You can see that there is a correlation. All right, I could draw a line right up the right in between here and it's gonna be approximately a, a nice straight line from low data maturity, low business success, high data maturity, high business success. Now you also see that there's a bit of an overweight in terms of the data maturity being low. Like I said, we took the business success and we held that constant. And then we looked at the data maturity factors. There, is, there, are, quite a, there are more companies in the low categories, the one and the two, than there are in the higher categories. As a matter of fact, we only have two of them in category five, but hey, they really do represent a unique profile. So we had to create that, uh, create that space for them. And I think it's gonna be continue to be pretty hard to get up there. So where are you? Where are you in your journey? Well, you can say after today where you might be in this. So if you get out a pen and paper or pencil, if you will, um, write this down. Category, strategy, architecture, technology, and organization. So we're going to make little ticky marks uh, after these number, after these categories as you learn about them and learn what category one or level, maturity level one, two, three, four, and five mean to you, and you can find yourself in there. These capabilities emanate from the presence of the item shown. This is not a capability model, although <clears throat> it is sort of indirectly one, but we went to, we went beyond the capabilities. We know what you need technically, architecturally to achieve those capabilities today. If you want to be on top of predictive maintenance, you have to be on top of your big data. And, and that probably means a data lake. So let's, <clears throat> we measure out your data lake maturity and that from there, po the possibilities just uh, explode. So this should give you a sense of priority. Why should it give you a sense of priority? Because William didn't sit here and just think about, hmm, what does one, two, three, four, and five look like? It's based on data and we have found in our walk here as, as consultants that companies do tend to follow a pattern of going up the maturity cycle from one, two, three, four, and five. So what's next is probably what's next for you depending upon where you are today. You can't skip levels, can't skip levels. We, we don't encourage you to even think about it. If you're a one and you wanna be a five, you have to go through two, three, and four, sorry to say, but you can go fast, you can go fast. And uh, it can probably take as little as for a good organization that's focused maybe six months or so to, to bounce. And that's really aggressive. That's really aggressive. And that's really keeping the focus there. Maturity levels tend to move in harmony. We didn't find too many companies that were very divergent between these categories. If you're a one in strategy, you're not going to be a five in technology. 
If you're a four in technology, you're probably not going to be a one in organization. You have to bring that up in order to get to the four in technology and so on. So very infrequently did we find organizations with more than one number differing across the categories. Mid-sized and smaller companies, yeah, if you're in one of those, what you consider a mid-sized or smaller company, you can add plus one. So you go ahead and give yourself a ticky mark right down the right down the pike there, right down the column. Uh, you you get one because I am. These are progressive uh, uh, approaches, progressive elements of maturity that a mid-sized and a smaller company probably is not going to get to. Momentum is paramount. I can't stress this enough. It's about momentum. If you're a one, don't fret, but get moving. Get moving up the maturity cycle today and get that momentum going. Again, you can move from one to two quickly if you got the focus. And I did not give all these maturity levels, one, two, three, four, and five, anything but a number. I didn't say you were a laggard if you were a one and you're a supreme example of all the possibilities if you're a five. You can work that in yourself. I think, though, for most organizations, you're going to need to be at my three. All right. Some of you need to be at four because you're in a, uh, an industry that is more aggressive about data. Now, so what about all this stuff? Well, the information management professional, what I found, and I've managed quite a few of them on an interim and longer term basis, it kind of comes down to this user satisfaction. We are internal consultants. That's how I like to look at uh, information management prof professionals inside of organizations. We have to have high user satisfaction. Sometimes that's a much more dominant uh, piece of the puzzle than the other two. Um, but over time, I have found that that gets kind of pushed a little bit more to the background. And these other things are becoming pretty important. And by the way, if you manage information management professionals out there, I encourage you to think about how you're grading out those professionals. Are you just using user satisfaction? because you should be using other things as well. Business ROI, business ROI. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Since when has the information management professional been responsible for business ROI? Well, since about maybe two years ago. And, and now we're bringing the ideas to the table that the organization can use to deliver that because we have the ideas, okay? Again, I want you to feel proud. I want you to feel assertive about your role in the organization as a data and analytics professional. And finally, are you growing your data maturity? So you're gonna learn about that here today. And um, you can definitely expect your professionals to be pushing up the maturity in their level. That's what, that's what I do uh, inside organizations. Uh, I'll say, okay, next year, I wanna be at an, the next level. You're an ETL or you're a data integration professional, what have you, uh, we're out of three. Next year, I wanna be at a four. No matter what else you know, comes get thrown in the way, no matter what the prior, how the priorities change, et cetera, et cetera, you got to think about that next level because we can't keep doing what we're doing today. We have to move it up. So here's your score sheet. Here, here's a full score sheet for you. Uh, it's so easy. I didn't bother giving you a downloadable file. Just make it look like this. Hopefully you've already started. So you're going to get a score and then you're going to get some next steps. That's what's really important here. What do you do about it? What do you do about your low score? What do you do about the fact that you're trying to achieve higher maturity? So keep your score, grade yourself by category, strategy, architecture, technology, and organization. So yeah, another thing I'd like to say is everyone is a maturity five. Congratulations. You are a maturity five, but for what year? <laughs> okay. Are you maturity five for 1990 or 2022? We want you, of course, to be higher maturity for the present time. Okay, maturity number one. This is kind of fun. I have a little fun with this. Uh, when I when I have given this class in person and I give it as a full day class uh, or, or a one hour uh, webinar like this or session like this, uh, I get a lot of heads nodding <laughs> when I talk about maturity level one. Infrastructure is overwhelmed, cloud costs out of control. I'm just throwing out some characterizations of maturity level one. You can know, you saw my data, you can know that you're not alone if this is you. Organizational silos, multiple overlapping data stores, so maybe the same piece of data is stored 10 times, just because, just because uh, number 10 didn't know about number numbers one through nine, or it just wasn't right, or they didn't know how to work with 
what numbers one through nine did. So let's do it again. This is true for data stores. This is true for reports. Uh, kind of where Zen Optics comes in, by the way. Uh, one vendor mentality. We're going to get everything we need, everything we possibly could use from vendor XYZ, from our favorite vendor. Um, and that may or may not be the best approach. As a matter of fact, I say, okay, you can bring them into the circle, but that is not the best approach today. There's too much differentiation going on. There's too much leading edge stuff that you probably need to be availing yourself of that you won't find in your current vendor stack. And I can say that be not even knowing what your current vendor is because I study them all and that is true for all of them. Some of your tools might be outdated. Hopefully they're not out of support. That's really outdated. But by outdated, I don't necessarily mean just out of support. I mean that they're not keeping up with the demand anymore. And maybe, maybe you're in a situation where the users don't demand anything anymore because they've just been kind of put in their place in regards to data. And that is not where you want the users to be. And if that's if they're sitting on their hands, you've got to change that. Resistance to change is replete at maturity level one. Everybody's scared of change. They're scared of the 25th person out there that's going to say, why did you do this? And uh, that is holding things back. So we got to get over some of these things. So I had a little fun with maturity level one, not trying to make fun of anybody's environment. I never do that. I always just talk about what the next steps are uh, on the journey. And that's what's important. And I don't talk about, I don't belabor, how did we get here? All right, let's take a new day. Today's a new day. Today's, today is day zero. OK, you're going to learn some things today. Today's day zero. Now, tomorrow's day one. You got to start putting things in action. OK, no more excuses. We got to start moving forward because, again, the information management professional is going to be judged based upon that. So for each of these levels, that was one. And I'm going to get a little bit more refined now as I get into two, three, four and five. Don't worry. But for each of these levels, I have found to get to the next level, there has to be a light bulb that goes off. And that's my little light bulb here in the, on the slide, right? There has to be a light bulb that goes off in order to get you to the next level. Frankly, there's probably quite a few, but the one that stands out as I think about those organizations that have made the jump from a one to a two is that they understand, they finally understand that you have to raise data maturity while you accomplish business goals because there's too many organizations out there. They're sitting on their hands. They're not moving forward because, well, I don't have a budget to raise data maturity. Nobody's asking me to raise data maturity. You know how many, in 25 years of consulting, you know how many times I've been asked to raise data maturity? Probably zero, probably zero. Oh, I've been asked to raise it while I do something else, and that I do, but just come in and raise data maturity? No, that doesn't happen. You don't get a budget for that. You get a budget for targeted marketing. You get a budget for predictive maintenance. You get a budget for fraud detection, et cetera, et cetera. Supply chain management, customer management, et cetera. Okay. So while you're doing all that, you don't always do it the same way that you did everything else before. This is not the time for cookie cutter approaches to applications. This is time for progressive approaches to applications. So the next uh, initiative that is put before you, think about doing it in a different way than you have been doing things. Now, this is how I'm going to structure maturity levels two, three, four, and five. There wasn't much to say about one, so I didn't do it this way, okay? But I'm going to take each block, uh, strategy, architecture, technology, and organization, and I'm going to talk about it. So let's start with data strategy. And this is where you get your pencil, get your, get your pen out, see if you can give yourself a ticking mark and raise this from a one to a two. Okay, data strategy. And these are the main things. These are the... Uh, these are the things suitable for a slide. There's more where this came from, you might say, but I think this gives you the essence. And I think this is enough for where you can give yourself the mark. Okay, emerging data standards. I didn't say they were complete at this level, but they're emerging. You're even think, you're thinking about it, whereas you weren't before. Data decentralization, you're getting data more out to the masses. There is executive awareness of data. Sometimes at maturity level one, there's no executive, the executives aren't aware of data. They're only aware of business things and applications. And oh yeah, they work on data by the way, but data is a thing and that sort, starts to emerge 
when you get to level two, partial self-service BI. I didn't say total, partial self-service BI. IT professionals are starting to get out of the way between a user and their data. Cloud first direction. Yeah, I, this wasn't maturity level two last year. That was more like a three. Now it's a two. Now it's sort of expected that an organization has a cloud first direction. And again, I'm not sitting here championing any, anything here. I'm sitting here telling you that a maturity level two organization has a cloud first direction. I happen to think that's a good thing. Architecture wise, central data warehouses, warehouse or warehouses emerge at maturity level two. Believe it or not, there are some organizations out there that don't, don't have what uh, any reasonable person, I guess, would call a data warehouse. Um, but they do at maturity level two. There's emerging platform heterogeneity, meaning you get the fact that in 2022, it's not one size fits all. Everything doesn't go into an Oracle database. Everything doesn't go into a SQL Server database necessarily. You think about it. You don't have you don't you, it's you don't have right fit platforms across the board, but you do have emerging platform heterogeneity. You have a data lake in development, and this again, this is another thing that wasn't here last year when I talked about this. That, that was a maturity level three thing last year, but now we find that hmm, just about everybody out there is getting into a data lake uh, at maturity level two and beyond. So notice the asterisk here. When I, when I say central data warehouse, to me, that's in a relational platform, data lakes in a cloud storage platform, none of this uh, other fancy stuff. Technology, master data sharing. You, I didn't say master data management at maturity level two, I didn't say that, but you are sharing master data from somewhere, at least a little bit. You're starting to get that concept. Technology wise, third party data is utilized. And by the way, sometimes the category uh, is difficult to assign for some of these things. Uh, machine learning chatter. I'm not saying machine learning algorithms are in place and running the business, but machine learning, machine learning chatter has begun. Data integration, ETL and ELT, which I think we've mostly found is a, a better form of data integration. I didn't say streaming. We'll get there. And there's a lot of dashboards, which will go away as we go up the maturity cycle, by the way. Organization-wise, there is data governance. I didn't say full data governance, not for the entire enterprise, not for every subject area. Uh, this data governance doesn't necessarily meet every month, et cetera, et cetera. But there are pockets, at least, of what they're calling data governance, pockets of business interests trying to get their arms around this important asset. You're finally using an agile methodology at level two. And you have data specialists not just simply application people that, oh, we happen to do a little data on the side. You know that data requires data specialists. And I'm not saying some of those application people can't be great at data. It's just their focus might not be on it. So you have great people that are data specialists doing the data work, the modeling, the architecture, the data integration, et cetera, all the DBA work, et cetera, et cetera. So that's maturity level two. So go down your list. If, you, if, this, if this is you, at least, okay, maybe you're beyond, but if this is you, at least give yourself a ticky mark for level two in these four categories. And we'll see where we are as we go along here. Now, the, the big idea to move to level three is that you have to attend to both the data and the data access ecosystems. You have both. And we have finally, I think, learned that we have to attend to the data ecosystem. Most people on this call would know that. Not everybody does. Some people focus completely on the BI. Well, that's okay as long as somebody else in the organization focuses on that data layer under the waterline. But you also have a BI ecosystem. Yes, you do. You have a BI ecosystem and that's not going anywhere. And that can be great. And that could be doing special fancy things, uh, even AI upon data across the organization. So you have to get that under management too not just the data. All right, so when you get that realization, you move into maturity level three. Again, I said that this is where most of you need to be. So hopefully some of you can give yourself some, uh, some marks for maturity level three and data strategy. You have acknowledged that there is not just data in the organization, but there's a data layer to the architecture. And that data layer is special. That data layer uh, is heterogeneous. 
and that data layer is managed by data professionals. You have reactive AI now for some automation. So you got some AI in place at maturity level three. The most basic type of AI is reactive AI. This is programmed to provide a predictable output based upon the input it receives. Reactive machines always respond to identical situations in the exact same way every time, but it doesn't, it, it automates. It. it automates whatever. And so when I get asked, well, how do we start our AI journey? Look for things to automate, look for things to automate. Self-service is now the dominant model. That's how far self-service has come in the past few years to be at maturity level three, not four, not five, but three architecture wise. You have not just your current architecture, but you have multi-year architecture direction and plans. You have an idea, you have a goal, you have a vision for where the architecture needs to go in let's say three years and let's say five years, okay? It's not just where we are today. You understand it's fluid. The architecture is flexible. It's not rigid. And this is well understood when you have those types of uh, plans in place. The data lake is in production now. Wasn't not just development, but you have a data lake. You are using data virtualization at maturity level three. You understand that sometimes you need to run a report and Snowflake needs to reach out to Oracle and get some data, or SQL Server needs to reach out to Teradata and get some data for the report. And that's okay, as long as it's not the dominant model, but uh, you, you bring that in. You have measured data quality levels at maturity level three. You can say, our data is at quality level three, just like I'm doing a maturity level here for your overall data and analytics, you do that for your data quality. And you, you raise that number for awareness. You're managing many data types. At one and two, it's alphanumeric. That's the dominant model. You, you haven't got into other things like JSON, XML, Avro, Parquet, but at maturity level three, you're into it. And you're able to deal with all these data types. There's some different ways you might be dealing with it, but you're dealing with it. You got it under management and you have some data lineage. That's starting to seep in now as being pretty important in the days uh, that we're in now of compliance, technology-wise. Your data warehouse is in the cloud at maturity level three. It's no longer on-premises, it's in the cloud. You have a graph database for all your relationship data. So relationship data, you're not force feeding it into the data warehouse anymore. You're actually doing real graph things with it. MDM, master data management of a major subject area. So you're well into to development, if not in production now, of your customer, of your product, of your whatever is a major subject area to you. You got at least one under your belt or almost under your belt at this point. You got master data management. That's how important master data management has become. You're using the data marketplace. Now we hear a lot about that. I don't need to belabor it, but you're using it. You're bringing in that data. You're using a data catalog. I didn't say it was fully populated. I didn't say everybody's bought into it. I didn't say, you know, you have your business metadata in there complete, but you are using it. It is starting to provide value. That's where the data catalog has come. You see how much, see how, see how the stack has grown here for maturity level three. Integration, now you're using streaming. Integration, now you're using reusable components. You're not just creating every integration from scratch. You're going to a company maybe that has uh, the plethora of integration routines that has already been done at your disposal. Organization-wise, data governance now is by subject area across most major subject areas. So data governance is pretty advanced at maturity level three. Organizational change management now has been added to your data projects. You know that you can't just create a database and put it out there and they will come. You, you have organizational change management to bring people along with your data projects. That's how important data projects are. You have to have that component. You have a chief data officer. You have data scientists. You have strong DevOps. I didn't say MLOps, but you have strong DevOps. You know your path to production well, and it's documented and you exercise it on a regular basis. That's maturity level three. Give yourself some marks if you're at maturity level three. Now, the big idea to get to four 
is that the data profile will drive the platform selection. The data profile will drive the platform selection. You understand heterogeneity already, but you make much more wiser decisions as you get to level four. And you look at the data profile. Is it unstructured data? Is it alphanumeric data? Is it gonna be accessed in just reporting? Is it gonna be used in machine learning? Now, these are some of the things that drive a platform selection. Again, it's not one size fits all anymore. We're talking maturity level four. We're way, we're way past that now. We're not trying to cram everything into SQL Server databases, Oracle databases, DB2 databases, et cetera, what have you. You know that today in 2022, you can't do that. Now, maybe down the road, maybe in 2032, there might be one size fits all. There, there, there is some signs actually on the horizon. I won't, I won't get into that too much right now but signs that there may be some translatical databases that might make sense for some consolidation, which would be nice. But anyway, I got to move on maturity level four, data strategy. Now your data is an asset in financial statements. It's on the, on the, uh, in, in, in the vernacular of the executives. They talk about data, predictive analytics. Now you're, you're not just looking at the rear view mirror, you're looking ahead, you're predicting with reasonable certainty what's going to happen. And you're able to get in front of that and change it because of data. AI, you're doing data parsing. This is, this is recommend, recommendations as in for data quality that you should pursue, which data you should use, automatic classification of data and automatic parsing of data. These are things that we don't have to do anymore. AI can do that and you're doing it at maturity level four. AI is also coming up with curated insights. We're not just using AI as BI, we're using it for what it's ultimately good for. AI curated insights, insights that you're bringing into the business. Architecture wise, Kubernetes. Yes, why am I bringing up an application thing? Because it permeates data as well. It has started to permeate data at maturity level four. You are using identity management. You're, you're beyond basic security. Identity management tools, REST APIs. You're accessing data through APIs now. You're also probably at this point uh, using a service that provides you with dozens or hundreds of APIs that you can choose from. Data lake house. Data, I, I, it's, it's kind of a loaded term, I know. And for some reasons, I hate to use it, but you know, it's the data lake and the data warehouse are now married, okay? They're now working together. And to get them to work together, it's not just you create a lake and you create a warehouse and uh, introduce them to one another, okay? There's some work to be done, but you've done that work. At maturity level four, you can now run queries through the warehouse that will reach into the lake, the data lake and get the rest of the data there seamlessly, for example. And you have full data lineage, full data lineage at maturity level four. Technology-wise, master data management is now beyond one major subject area. It might be two, it might be three, but it's gone beyond your customer, your product, what have you. And you've, you've, you're, you've got the vision, you got the value, you got the excitement of master data management, you're moving on. Data catalog is now populated, maybe not 100% at this point, but maturity level four organizations have a well-populated data catalog. It's not just sitting there. So many data catalogs, unfortunately, are just sitting there, but not at maturity level four. They're actually using it. And you're doing data observability, not just data quality, but data observability through the pipelines. You have visibility to the pipeline. Your search is augmented and it's interactive. It's not just running SQL. It's not just whatever you can think of in the moment. Your search is talking back to you. The, your search is saying, go here, go there. Your search is helping you out with your queries, et cetera. Your analytics are live. They're not on day old data. They're on data that's happening in the background and changing as, as we speak, right? APIs, you're under API management tools, kind of like what I was saying before, but technology wise, you're there with APIs at maturity level four. Organization wise, you have comprehensive data governance now. And oh, by the way, I found in level four and level five, there's a predominance of legal owning data governance in the organization. That surprised me a little bit. 
but that is a, a trend that I see probably worth talking about. The chief information architect or equivalent, maybe nobody with that title, but the, the data architecture is recognized at the chief level, at the C level now, and not just the CDO. The CDO typically doesn't get into architecture too much, but architecture has a seat at that table at maturity level four, and you have strong ML ops. You're beyond DevOps. Now you've applied those principles to your machine learning. It's that far along. Wow, good stuff. Hopefully you've been able to give, some of you have been able to give yourself a mark or four for maturity level four. Now let's go on to maturity level five. This is the, uh, the holy grail, if you will. Uh, and it doesn't take more time or budget to do it right. It takes knowledge and focus. And that is what maturity level five organizations have realized. It's, it's we can do this. We can do this. We can get the knowledge. We can get the focus and we can do it. It's, 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 we, don't have to, we don't have to go back for these ridiculous budgets because we have to add on to our inefficiencies, but we're adding to efficiency at this point. We're adding our knowledge and our focus. So hopefully I'm giving you a few things that you need to go and build up your knowledge on, okay? Data strategy, now we're into hyper-personalization. We're getting into prescriptive analytics, not just the predictive, Predictive said, oh, this is what's going to happen. And remember, I said at maturity level four, we've been able to get in front of that a little bit. Maturity level five, the machine is helping us get in front of that by telling us what we should do, by prescribing the next best tasks for us, producing information products. Our information is turning into a, a real ROI center for the organization. You found a way. And you have limited memory AI. This is learning. Your AI is now just not just doing automated stuff, but it's learning from the past and building experiential knowledge by observing actions or data. It's using historical observational data in combination with pre-programmed information to make predictions and perform complex tasks. So this is great. This shows real progression in AI. Architecture-wise, your data is fully discoverable. It's may, maybe it's fully populated. Uh, the catalog is fully populated, and now users are able to use it. Your data is self-describing. You have a microservices and a containerized analytical architecture, not just application architecture, but your analytical data is also in this model. And you are using databases for multi-model usage. You're using that capability. It's probably, it's possibly just sitting there right now as a possibility in your database if you're not at five. But at five, they're using it. They're using multiple data types uh, to their advantage within their databases. What does technology look like? Well, now you have complete enterprise MDM. Close the loop. I'm not saying your journey's done with MDM. It's never done. But I am saying at that point, you, you have all major subject areas mastered with high, uh, high data quality and real-time distribution. Your data, you have databases and processing at the edge in IoT. If you have an IoT architecture, you don't just have a flat file out at your edge, you have databases and you have processing at the edge. And I'm pretty sure the next year, the slide is gonna say artificial intelligence at the edge because that is possible now too. Special chips, but it's possible. You have embedded databases inside of applications. Embedding is not just for vendors. It's for enterprises as well. And you have policy management practices within your organization, probably tools to help you with that. Organization-wise, pervasive data governance. It's not questioned. They have a seat at all tables. They've been providing value. They haven't been sitting off in a corner saying, you know, throwing off, uh, you know, uh, rules from the, from the hill but they've been integrated into applications, they being the data governors, right? They've been integrated into applications, bringing value to the applications as well as to the enterprise for the longer term, raising level of maturity for the next application and the next generation, if you will, beyond. Um, also, we see a creep in of FinOps into organizations and we find maturity level five organizations are there. Now, I also threw in multi-hybrid cloud. Yeah, that's why you need FinOps, so that you use the right cloud, okay, for the right uh, application. However, I'm not saying 
that it's not till you get to maturity level five that you're using multi or hybrid cloud by no means. That's probably a two or a one, okay? But I am saying that for FinOps, you need, uh, you, you, you put your FinOps over multi and hybrid cloud environments. And I'm not, I'm not sure that multi or hybrid cloud is a real factor in maturity. So I've left it off. I'm not saying that more mature organizations are multi hybrid cloud. Uh, and I'm not that, and if they are, they probably are because they're doing more with data, right? But that I don't think it's necessarily a factor in being mature. It just is something that happens. So that's 2022. There you go. Hopefully you put some, put some more markers on when I talked about four and five. And uh, uh, if we had time for interaction, I would ask you what your scores were. And, uh, but you know now, you now know. And grab this presentation if I went too fast, come back to it. Look at what that next level is. So if you're a two in data strategy, what does three look like? Hmm. What do I need to start putting into my timelines? What do I need to start putting on my roadmap? Next year, by the way, for artificial intelligence, we're going to see machines with theory of mind AI. That's going to, they're going to be able to understand and remember things like emotions and then adjust the behavior based upon those emotions as they interact with people. So really getting things done. And you know, to get things done, you have to go through people. And people have these things called emotions. And theory of mind AI will be all over that. And then there'll be, I don't know about next year. I don't know how much of this will happen next year, but self-aware AI is no doubt on the horizon. But if you're saying, wow, that's so far out there, I just don't know when possibly my organization will get there. Well, I've already given you the answer. You go, you go from wherever you are to the next level, to the next level, to the next level, to the next mountain, get over that mountain and then you're on your way. Uh, it's it's kind of like uh, if you've never swung a baseball bat, when am I gonna hit a home run? Well, how about, how about you just make contact with the ball first and then we'll go from there. That's what I'm saying. And I have just some final words of advice as you go on your information management journey. There's more maturity in moving imperfectly than in merely perfectly defining the shortcomings and saying, oh, we're not doing this right. We're not doing that right. Well, let's define what we can do right. Build your credibility. Build credibility that, that greases the skids for your recommendations to your organization. If you don't, if you don't have, if, you're, if your recommendations aren't getting uh, resonance in the organization, think about that bully. Do you have the credibility yet to deliver it? And don't fret, just build it. Don't be afraid to fail. Have an open mind. There are different paths, by the way, and people can have different opinions. And this is something that in my consulting, I encounter all the time. Uh, I might have a way forward, but it's going to take, I don't know, 100 person hours to convince the organization that that's the way forward. Whereas somebody else has a way forward that's different and will get us there, but it will take, I don't know, 50 more person hours to, for it to happen. Well, do the math. Probably easier just to do it their way and we get to the same result. That's what I'm talking about. No plateaus are comfortable for long. You'll have to rescore yourself next year. Come back and let's see how you are doing. Keep in mind that you got to get you got to get on the uh, the path, the journey, the resistance that you might be feeling, either personally or within the organization. It's not about maturity level five. Who doesn't want to be maturity level five? It's the journey. It's the pain in the journey. It's the setbacks in the journey. It's the this and the that in the journey. It's the do we have the right people? Can we actually do this? Build your focus so that you can move forward. Hopefully I've answered your question. Is your information management mature? Look at your scorecard now and uh, answer that for yourself. And hopefully you have some actions there to move you forward in something very important, information management maturity. I'll turn it back to Shannon now and get your questions. William, thank you so much for another great presentation. Just to answer the most commonly asked questions, just a reminder, I will send a follow-up email by end of day Monday for this webinar with links to the slides and links to the recording. So diving in here, William, with regards to slide 12, who defines this, an industry body? What was that last word you said, Shannon? An industry body. An industry body. Uh, no, um, 
I guess I would say you defined it, you being in the enterprise, because this is reverse engineered from what enterprises are doing. Uh, this was originally what the second uh, lowest uh, profile, or what's the word for, um, I want to say decile, but that's for 10, 20%. Second lowest 20%, whatever that word is. Uh, I, well, it'll come to me after the presentation, but the second lowest looked like this. And so this, is, uh, this was not defined by me or an industry body. It's defined by you in the enterprise. And Hina, we'll invite you to jump in here where uh, whenever you feel, uh, whenever you want to jump in. Uh, so, to, uh, so where do you see the data vault and the maturity model? Okay, so uh, I'm going to say that I'm not sure that that's necessarily correlated to maturity. I find that some organizations are doing it, some organizations are not. It doesn't preclude you from being at any level of maturity. If you do it great, I think it enables some of the other things. So I'm not, I'm not saying don't do it or anything like that. I'm saying that if it's an enabler or some of the other things I talked about that are more correlated to maturity, then great. And so I think if you do data vault, great. You obviously are attending to data governance. You obviously are attending to uh, your central data warehouse and your data standards and things like this, which helps you in raising up your maturity. Perfect. And what are the dependencies between the four categories that impede progress, progressing to the next level on one category before maturing to the other? Yeah, that was, those were the slides that I, that I had in here. So this is what get, this is what you, this is the, 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 the light bulb that goes off as you go from one to two, you realize that you can raise data maturity. You must raise data maturity only while you're accomplishing business goals. That's what, Maturity level one, they don't get that. But maturity level two, you have got that in order to get to the next level and so on and so forth. These are the big ideas that you need to get to the next level. Yeah, I just want to add to that. I think, you know, what William said earlier about, you know, focusing on the people really, and it's about the change management as you go through those levels, uh, really empower the people, right? They are the ones that are really going to you know, you're defining these models, you're actually scoring yourself. So it's really about empowering yourselves to sort of move through those uh, different maturity levels, I think. Yeah. Perfect. I think we have time for at least one more question here. Um, what do you mean by embedded database in applications? Older applications were based around a database. Uh, I mean that, um, the, the database is, um, I don't want to use the word embedded because <laughs> that would be wrong, but um, the database is exclusive to the application. The database has sort of cache the data that's important to the application. It's not just reaching out with SQL calls to a database. Obviously, you know, most applications do that, but when you build applications for your user community, you build them with the databases that are uh, maybe, maybe there's an extraction from the main database like the data warehouse that's appropriate and cached for that particular need. And that database is embedded. Maybe you have uh, your users are accessing through devices like mobile devices and you are caching a database at that, at that level at the edge that does have a lot to do, that statement did have a lot to do with edge architectures, but it has to do with really all applications as well. Perfect. Well, that does bring us right to the top of the hour here. Hina and William, thank you so much for these great presentations. And thanks to Zen Optics for sponsoring today's webinar and hoping to make these webinars happen. And thanks to all of our attendees for being so engaged in everything we do. Always appreciate it. I love it. Uh, and again, just a reminder, I will send a follow-up email by end of day Monday with links to the slides and links to the recording. William, Hina, thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.